Hello. Hey dudes. I have been uh been been away for a bit. I was uh I was sick. As as discussed in the Discord. Hey Timur. Hey cheese. Twitch didn't notify you. You got worried. Oh no. Look, I'm here, I exist. There was I I could have been late. I don't know. Sometimes I'm late. It's okay. It's all right. I could I could have gotten sick again. I still have a cough, so um I'll try I'll try to hit the mute button. If I miss it, I'm sorry. Um so, I guess I should we should kind of get a get an update situation going here. Where's my desktop? There's my desktop. Cool. Um so I've I've changed some things been going back and forth like do i make the art do i make the functionality do i make the art do i make the functionality and then i decided like okay i want to focus on the functionality of the game so let me look for uh fucking art from the pokemon games and then i can just use that because i'm kind of already basing my game off of that conceptually so um i've, I've brought some pokemon assets in our player character is now the player character from uh Maybe Heart Gold Soul Silver. I don't know. One of them. One of them. Good news, you changed turns, so you'll be able to appear in my streams. You changed turns. Hmm. Does that mean you changed, like, your class schedule? What does that mean, Cheese? But it, it sounds good. It sounds good. I like you hanging out. It's always nice. Brazilian speech. That's okay. That's okay. Turns here is also the word for the time you have classes. Whoa. Interesting. Okay. I mean, that's what I guessed, but I don't. I don't know. I didn't want to. Uh, didn't want to assume. Cool. All right. Well, uh, you know, w w welcome in. Like always, hang out, chill out, do whatever. Um. Okay. So. What I want to focus on today specifically is um, character movement. I've been like, I'm thinking about this a lot. I've been going back and forth on like, what's the most important thing to do? Um, and I feel like I should start with the things that I know I want, that I know a player will experience uh, the most and also the earliest. And so like, that's definitely movement. Um, so I have, I have gone through, I've tried like four different like movement styles uh, before realizing that like actually what I want is I want to be able to control a character just like Pokemon. Uh, so we will, we will, I will talk about that and exactly what that means. Maybe I'll break paint out and explain it. And then we're going to try to, uh, we try to follow a YouTube video. Someone has a YouTube video that says make a Pokemon game in Godot. Part one is player movement. So like, hopefully they do a good job, but um, I've learned that a lot of people will write guides for things and they do stuff like so goddamn the wrong way. And I'm watching them and I'm like, I really think that's a terrible way to do that. There must be a better way. And then like three videos later, like, yeah, there's a much better way. <sighs> the bad news is now you study morning and night. Well, but is it a little bit less? Is it like le a little at night and a little in the morning? Like Pokemon. I do mean a grid system. Yes, but... So actually, let's just let, let me just uh, stop watching your guides. Team Worm, do you you do things bad the bad way? You like you fucking I don't know. As some some people are very good about being like I don't know the best way to do this, but here's how I figured it out, and it worked for my small situation. Like um, the thing that I was looking up a bunch is um, collision, the the easiest way to do collision for walls and stuff. And then is that different if you want collision for like a door that's going to open and then it needs to be it needs to stop you when it's closed, but let you through when it's open. Um, and some of the ways that people handled things were is like so much work for every single wall, like you had to do each wall individually, uh, whereas the smart way to do it is you can go into your like tile map and you can be like, actually, let me just let me just go to it. You can go into your tile map and then you can be like, hey, I want to just set like like certain things. I just want to be like, hey, you any any time you see this tile, you can't walk into it. This log, you can't walk into that log. You can never walk into the log. The log always blocks you. Um, 
And so now you just draw a log and then you can't walk into the log. You don't have to like make a special object for each fucking log that you put in the game. Uh, it's so on a small scale, maybe doing it the way that other people did it made sense, but th like this is the way you do it. And I, I knew, I knew you could do it this way. It took me forever to find it. Ah. You study four hours in the morning, four hours at night. Oh my God. The night also has online assignments. That's, God, geez, that's like a, that's a job. Let's see, when I went to school, I started at like seven and finished at three. Okay, no, that, that's eight hours as well. But you're, you're saying you're just studying, like not, are you, in, in studying, are you including like homework and, uh, and class? Because if so, that sounds okay. The job part is the morning stuff since the class you're doing is paid. Okay, that's pretty cool. That's actually, that's cool. I think that makes it much better. Like it's still a giant time commitment, but that's fucking sweet. What, uh, what's the, if you don't mind talking about it, what's the paid thing that you're doing? All right, we're gonna, we're gonna open paint. Hold on, hold on. This is how we do this. Okay, so what what is special about Pokemon movement? So as uh, as Cheese mentioned, Pokemon movement's on a grid system. So you can't just like you can't just like walk all willy nilly. You go like uh, paint that you should have deleted that. What the hell, paint? Is that yeah, that is there? It is indeed there. Um, so you you're always moving on a grid system. You are always moving like northeast, south, or west. So uh, you know, like if you're here, you can move up there, or you can move over here. But but better than that, and this the specific thing that I want is that um, if let's say let's say you're right here and you're looking this way, you can press right on the control stick or the d-pad or i guess a keyboard uh and then you will first look to the right and then if you if you let go you you, you don't move you actually you just changed where you were looking uh and then if you keep holding it then then you actually will will go on and move to the right um and and then you'll continue moving right if you just hold it down um so that like that specific thing is what i want to capture I don't, I don't know if I needed to open paint for that, but I don't know. It was maybe a kind of helpful illustration. Class itself only lasts like three months, and then you're going to the actual job instead. Cool, so the class includes training, but you even get paid for the training part. Dude, that's that's cool. In, uh, in college, I worked um, worked on a, like a pilot project doing some experiments and they paid people to do the experiments but they tried so hard to not pay people and the way that they got around not paying people is they they made a class that you could get credit for that was was like learning how to do all the lab processes and do the experiments that they needed to do and they would only pay people if they couldn't get people to sign up for the class so that is a uh, it's nice to not see that attitude. It's nice to see the attitude of like, well, you're you're working for us, even though we're training you, so we might as well freaking pay you. All right, where face cam? I guess you can hang out down there. Ugh, every everywhere is in the way. Everywhere is a problem. But maybe bottom right's okay for now. Bottom right's certainly good for um for watching videos. Um. Okay, so. The different kinds of movement that I had messed with. Let me just pop the game open here real quick. Um, currently, we're in this terrible state where I was trying like eight directional movement, and I didn't really. I, I that trying that made me realize like, oh, I don't want. I don't like this. I want the movement from Pokemon. Um, Specifically for like how I'm going to put puzzles into the game, I want you to have the kind of control you have in Pokemon, where it's really easy to uh, 
Oh shit, your Glover wants a random fact. Okay, you give me give me one second. Oh my god. Oh my god. Um the way that I want puzzles to work, it will be very helpful to have Pokemon's movement plus uh the ability to like strafe. So like I want you to be able to hold a button and instead of turning around and walking down on the screen, I want you to be able to like backpedal or while you're holding this button, like sidestep to the right while still facing the same way. Um, but currently our movement is a little bit messed up uh, because if we're going at an angle, look at that, look at that. If we go at any angle because of how I took out, I took out angular movement, the character just looks down by default. Um, but you know, like I can, I can walk into walls and then you, you don't go through them and tree stumps. And trees? Yeah, we did trees too. Did we do what we did? We also did water. Cool. Um, and then up here, I'm I'm working on making doors that open. I think currently this one works. Yeah, yeah, this one works. But it's just open. Uh, so you know, I'm working on that. Got to figure out how signals work. And uh, that shouldn't be too bad. I have a few things open to deal with that. Um. But that's still super confusing to me. All right, so let's 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 get the random fact controller cord get out of my way. All right, okay, so so we go over here and then we open this and then we click that and then we have a button. We have a button. Oh my god, the web page is taking forever to load. All right. Okay, so what the? Nope, it's not that. It's this. It should be. It should just be this. There we go. All right. Okay. The cubicle did not get its name from its shape, but from the Latin cubiculum, meaning bedchamber. Okay, that's creepy and weird. I don't like that. I don't like that. We, we do indeed have a button. I just... I feel like I forgot how to do everything. I've been gone for a week. I've forgotten how to do fucking everything. Big Brian Seth indeed, jeez. Okay, so you said something about the cool thing you're doing. It's called the Young Apprentice Program. Cool. It may exist in other countries with other names too. Yeah, there's definitely like all sorts of programs like this. Um, usually they're pretty cool, but they're definitely not like standard in America. You've never done it before, so you're not sure if all the places that have it have the paid classes stuff. Yeah, I think there's there's definitely programs uh, depending on the school like. Not the school that I went to. Actually, no, the school I went to had a um, had a paid um, like IT program where they would teach you to do IT stuff and then then you would do IT stuff for the school and also for the uh, we had a we had like a TV studio and you could take classes to learn to do TV studio stuff and you'd like make films and uh, also record the like uh, the like daily announcements and stuff. Um, the school got a grant from Bill Gates, and they had to spend it on technology. Uh, so they bought like a bunch of computers, and then were like, "What the hell else can we buy that's like technology?" They had to like talk back and forth with the people providing the money, and so then they decided on a, a film studio, which is pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, but anyway, yeah, there's all sorts of paid things like that. I just, I don't think there's any standardized thing in the U.S. There should be. It'd be really nice. Um, everybody's complaining in the U.S. like nobody wants to be a plumber. Nobody wants to be an electrician. Well, get kids to do it and pay them. And they'll probably be like, hell yeah, dude. The only problem is the morning school, the job one, is two cities away. Oh, no. So you go to the station with your parents in the early morning, then catch a train to go to school. And on the way back, you catch a train and then a bus. Dang, that's a lot of work. I hope you have like uh, some kind of nice entertainment on the way. Lots of lots of travel sucks. I fucking I hate it. Having to commute for anything is lame. All right, so let's uh, let's get to figuring out our Pokemon movement. Hopefully, this guy's information is good. It may not be. Lots of people's information is bad, um, and. I feel like obviously I can sh I should contextualize that with I don't know any better, uh, but that's still you know with, whether I can do a better job at coding Pokemon character movement uh, or not is irrelevant to the actual quality of it. Um, so first I want to just see does he have? Ooh, he just has a link to the project files, so that's really cool. I honestly kind of wished he had just pasted the movement script. 
Okay, so 416 is where tile-based movement starts. All right, well, let's just jump to that. Okay, and then uh, we go full screen. Mm, nah. The game's looking hella solid. Yeah, it looks, uh, it looks like Pokemon. But honestly, I think I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to stick with that art style and I'm going to slowly like make things that look like they fit in with the color palette because like I was thinking about it and like I, I love the way Pokemon games look. They look fucking great. They're cute. They're adorable. They function. You can you can read what things are on the maps. Um, the, the only thing that makes me sad about that is I really want the ability to like change outfits and that really wasn't a thing until um it wasn't a big part of the game until like Pokemon Sun and Moon. And at that point, the the camera's much closer to the character. You can see way more detail. Um, changing outfits in uh in when your outfit is that tiny is not really a huge drive. People aren't gonna do stuff a whole lot of cool. They're, you're not gonna do cool challenges to get like a a blue shirt instead. Maybe some people will, but I don't. Uh, the drive won't be there as much. You don't mind the train is like 10 minutes? Oh, whoa. Yeah, that's a tiny train ride then. I was thinking it'd be like half an hour or something. I think you made a friend, so the way back will probably be better too. That's cute. Good job, Cheese. When you become an adult, r remember how to make friends because it's fucking hard. You'll like meet people and be like, oh, they, they seem like they like the same things as me. Maybe I should invite them to hang out. And then you're like, oh my God, but my house is a mess. Uh, I gotta clean my house. And, and then you don't, because you got too much going on, because you're an adult and you're lazy. You know, at, at least from, from my point of view. <laughs> Hashtag dad art style, yeah. Pokemon has a great art style. The train was 30 minutes, you'd rather stay home because you doubt you'd make it. Like you'd have to get up. How did LOL become cock? I don't know. I don't know. That's that's for you and your autocorrect to uh, to discuss together. All right, let's uh, let's pause the music. I suppose you wouldn't make it to school on time. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Like you'd have to get up so early. It would be it would be too difficult. You could do it. You'd get used to it. We, don't want we do. We do, my guy. You are correct. Do we have volume? We do have volume. Okay. Stop in between tiles. So there is a bit more logic to add versus just simple movement. So let's go to our player scene. Oh, you know what? Okay, real quick. Before before I do this, I'm going to do what I did with every other time that I changed the movement in my game. I'm going to make a duplicate of the project file so that if I screw things up horrendously, uh, you know, we're good. We could just we could just undo everything we did today and then and then we're okay. All right, that is now done. School only opens when classes start. Oh, there's no like you can't just like hang out in the library. Our school always the the high school that I went to, like the library opened half an hour early. So like if your parents had to drop you off or something, you could uh you could just go hang out there. Which uh I don't know. Li libraries are such an essential thing. I feel like every school needs a library that opens like an hour early, especially if like the weather's bad or something. Like, I don't know. People need a place to fucking hang out. And it might as well be a place of learning and technology, you know? All right. All right, dude. I'm ready for the tile based movement. Let's add a script to it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's start off by defining a few variables. So, first, let's define the player's walk speed. So we can do export bar walk speed. And for now, let's just set it to be 4.0. Okay, so one problem we might run into is this person is clearly using um not they're not using Godot 4. They're using Godot 3 because the way that you do variables that you need to export in Godot 4 is you just put an at before the, the export. Um so hopefully the rest of this holds up. Um let's let's see what else he does. Um, or keyword allows us to change this variable value during runtime. So it'll be helpful later on. That is and true. Let's also define the tile size so we can use it in our code. And we 
will set it to be 16. Now let's create okay. a variable called initial position. And let's default it to be a vector 2 with x and y set to 0. This variable represents the player's position at their start tile before they move on to another tile. And let's copy this. All right. So let's let's get these things put in. And then uh, then we'll keep following. I, d I do kind of wish I could see his finished product. Because maybe this will get us close to Pokemon movement, but not quite there. Um, playing Pokemon Infinite Fusion. It does not have a well-done version of Pokemon movement. And it's very annoying. It is dumb. It's difficult to, um, if you're looking forward and you want to look a different direction, but not move, it's like, you just fucking can't. It's so lame. <sighs> School's literally closed. Yeah, a lot of, I think in the US, all schools do things all kinds of different ways. Um, like our school had a gate in the front of it like a, a huge gate with tall bars that you couldn't climb over and there was like a police officer that worked at the school um and then like an hour or two before school started the gate would be unlocked but all the building doors would be locked um but the library was like right next to the entrance to the school and so then you could the, the library was always open early um, some, some schools just like, it's a totally open campus. There's like no doors to lock. Everything's just exposed to the outside. Um, in California, a lot of schools are like that. I don't, uh, but, but when I was going to school, like school shootings weren't really a problem. So, um, that might be a completely different thing now, but none of my schools had like gates or walls that kept you off of the campus until, um, until high school. And then really, if you had to, you could climb over that, that gate that fence but it was always open way before you would need it to be uh, to be open uh so anyway let's uh beep, 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 hide the firefox thing and so then we're gonna go into our player we don't care about your sprite right now my dude we care about your script okay so we're gonna just like completely get rid of all of our functionality probably should be fine we have a backup we have a backup it's okay and, and probably this guy knows what he's talking about. This has 73,000 views. Do any of the comments say he doesn't? A great tutorial. Exactly what I was looking for for months. Word of warning to anyone starting this tutorial. It was abandoned and not finished. Okay, but they got the movement, though. Cool. Okay, all right, all right. That seems probably okay. Team where we had a gate on your elementary school in the early 2000s, but not the middle school. Whoa. I would have thought it'd be like the opposite. Like, maybe not. Hmm. Yeah, I guess, honestly, there's an argument to be made that any any age group of kids are going to be little fuckers. And you might need to keep them in or out, as the case may be. You usually see those metal doors on, like, shopping malls shops and tiny shops on city centers okay so like you mean like um like um oh my god how could i describe the metal doors they like they like it's not solid metal it's like a weird little like like a mesh like frame thing that you slide open and closed it maybe not but like all the retail stores here that have like nice big windows that people might break to steal their things they have these like things they either like pull down or to the side and they're like um and they look like an accordion basically but they're metal but yeah it's interesting a school would have that but uh, I, I don't they probably have problems with fucking vandalism or crime it's so brutal to have to deal with that kind of stuff it's uh it's like one of those things that makes me mad and I just want to be like in a not stupid world that stuff just wouldn't have to exist but then like too bad Seth you live in a stupid world so either fucking deal with it or don't okay so we have our variable that's a walk speed and then right we need to define a constant which is tile size interesting to actually define that and to not just like 
round our movement to the nearest 16th. But maybe we will do that. Oh, and I guess this would be nice if you change the tile size. You just come in here and change this and then all your code should work. Good. Asterisk. Uh, okay, and then we need an initial position. And that is going to be a vector two. It's going to start at zero, zero. So I don't fully understand that. I guess that's saying wherever the character starts is going to be their initial position. And we're just calling that zero. So like if you save your game and then reload the game, wherever you start at is zero. And all of your movements are going to be in reference to that. That might, I wonder if that'll be a problem if we're changing locations. Like I, my, my plan is to have a few different um, areas on a few different planets. Well, we'll change it if it doesn't work. Your normal night school does have a gate, which would probably be more useful if the school wasn't open in the back. Yeah, our our school, like technically, if you walked all the way to the back, you could find a much shorter chain link fence to jump over. But, you know, that was like to the back of like a gully. Nobody was going to be going back there. Isn't zero zero the max top left of the map? I believe so. So I'm not sure if we are defining um, I'm not sure if we're saying that our initial position should be at zero zero or if we're saying that where our initial position is is now going to be zero zero. But I, I think you are right that it is just it's the like the top left of the map. It's annoying that it's not the bottom left, but you know, it, whatever they they want Y to be down, I can I can figure that out. I'll just flip everything. The school's quite literally open, no gates, no walls. Well, no outer walls, right? Like your classrooms hopefully have walls. Some classmates even get from there. I don't know what that means, geez. I feel like maybe you had a typo. Actually, you capitalized from, so it sounds like they get the software company from there, which would be cool. I, I would like some from. From people are cool. They make great games. People are getting hooked on Dark Souls there. Yeah. Yeah. Or at least the, the development company. Ah. Okay, so we'll, we'll figure this out. I think essentially, however this works, a solution to it is just going to be changing this initial position. Um, like when we save the game. So that that way, when the game boots back up and it's like, hey, what's what's our initial position? It just won't be zero zero anymore. It'll be two thousand one thousand or wherever the hell the player left left off. All right. So I think that's that's everything. It's just, it's just it's, uh. all right. Looks good. Looks good. Hey, Booski. How's it going, dude? All right, let's bring Firefox back up. You know what? Maybe just leave the music on. But let's let's bump the Chrome audio a tiny bit. School building's a normal build. A normal building school. You, uh, the school building is a normal school building. There's a gate on the front. The back, which is behind the sports court, is simply open. Yeah, I think that's pretty common, honestly. There's even horses and houses there. That's interesting. Our, um, all the schools that I have gone to had houses next to them on some side. Um, but they were always, like, they had walls. The, pe the, the people who owned the houses had walls. Which, God, now that I think about it, I would not want to live next to a school. There may be an elementary school, but... I don't know. Junior high kids and high school kids, they get up to some bullshit. They might throw crap in your yard or something. The school's never closed because you can just enter from the back for sure. I, I assume the police would probably not be happy with that. And if, if somebody saw you there, they would probably report you. Okay. Mm. So just a flag if the player is moving or is 
How's the volume balance of the music compared to the video? This guy's kind of quiet. Let's see, does this currently still better? One last variable called percent move to next hop. Now we'll set it to be 0, 0.0. The rain. Okay, so let's put this in. So I, th I think I can kind of conceptualize what he is, how he is setting this up. It seems like it makes sense. So then we need an input direction. And that's also going to be a vector, sure. Um, and so then like if you're pushing up and left, then um, you would have you would have each of these would be a value. If you're just pushing up, you would just have a Nope, you would just have a Y value. If you're just pushing left or right, you'd have a X value. Oh, and then obviously down would be a negative, negative Y value. I explained that in a terrible way. Great, and then, okay, okay, sure. The the thing that I was... It's it's interesting to not know anything about... Not, not no, I, okay, I know something. I know very little. I still feel like I know nothing about uh, writing scripts in Godot, um, the, I can still conceptually think about like, oh, if I want to make movement like Pokemon, I need to like know if the player is already moving or not, because that determines whether or not they're going to change direction or they're going to keep moving in the same direction that they're already moving in. So, uh, this, this is, this is, this all makes sense. It feels nice. Percent moved to next tile. Now this part's interesting. So they're going to check the percent that they've moved to the next tile. So maybe it's like, if they do enough, you're just gonna round up and have them move to the next one. If they don't push in the direction enough, they just won't move to the next tile. Your morning school is basically a mini college. You can go there, take a test, then you can become a student and get a certificate in whatever you choose to study. A lot of schools are like that here. The one you're in even has a medical course as part of it. That's cool. Um, is it in, uh, in the United States, there are things that are generally considered like trade schools. And a lot of them are open to people of not of any age. I think you have to be like over 15 or something. Um, but you can start going there like while you're still in high school. Um, and you can learn. It's usually like a, a specific practical trade, like learn to be a plumber, learn to be an electrician, things like that. And, um, and yeah, they're super a super valuable part of society It'd be nice if they were more popular um okay so next step so you didn't have to take a test for what you were doing the big enterprise that owns the market chain that has the market you're working on is paying for your classes they do the same to everyone else in your class that's pretty cool so then I, I would assume that means that whatever you're going to be doing is relatively um, like stable and successful if the people who need you to do it for them can just pay for your classes. You're not sure if you could enter the school through testing without the program because you don't live in that city and don't know shit about the school. <laughs> yeah, I could see... Um, I don't know, they, they probably, most schools, I would imagine, would like to teach everyone everything. But, uh, you know, real world problems like money get in the way. So yeah, I could see them limiting things to um, where you live or uh, whether or not you've passed certain tests. That makes sense. So it's, it's nice that that program exists, that you can do this stuff. And hopefully you enjoy it and it's not like a terrible way to spend your time of this value would go from 0 to 1, which essentially represents a percentage. And this is helpful to interpolate between tiles so we know what position we should set the player to be. Now let's go to our ready function and let's initialize the initial position. I don't have a ready function, bro. This by I'll make one. Setting it to be position. And this gets the position of the player. Let's delete this. And now let's create a new function called physics process. And this is called every frame. 
And within this function, there's going to be three cases that we want to handle. The first case is if the player is not moving. So is moving is set to false. <laughs> and in this case, we I'm glad this guy typos. I typo all the time. Okay. I feel Let's call a so self-conscious about it. Player input. This function we would have to implement later on. The next case, else if, the input direction is not vector 2.0. So there is some sort of direction given. And in this case, we would want to call a helper function called move. And we'll implement this later on. And we should also pass in delta. The last case is the player is just idle and has just stopped moving. So we should set is moving back to false. Let's go ahead and implement the process player input function. So All right, pause. let's let's uh, get get there. that out of the way. There we go. That's a good spot to pause. Okay, so then let's get let's get the physics process going. Um, so what I know about the physics process is that it's designed to handle lots of things because it's specifically uh, oh shit and the ready the ready function. Um, the physics process is like doing things every frame of your game. But before that, we need the ready function, which I believe is just like when the game starts or when whatever this process is starts. So like the player is in the game when the game starts. So then it'll happen when the game starts. But like, um, I don't know if you spawned something, whatever their ready function is, would happen right when it spawned. So then we're going to change initial initial position to the character's position. OK, so then this seems to answer that question. We are just going to define their initial position as wherever they are when things start up, which, uh, you know, it makes sense. You can't leave the school even during break. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. It was in high school. It was a really big deal. Um, it was really difficult to get permission to, like, leave school for lunch. Like, I had to sign a bunch of things. My parents had to sign things. Um... I had to have a certain like grade point average or they wouldn't let you leave. It was a giant pain in the butt, but it was nice to be able to like walk down the street and get some gross fast food for lunch. But it makes sense. Like kids need to stay on campus. It's too hard to uh, monitor them otherwise. And obviously by kids, I mean minors, non-adults. Once you're 18 and you're in college, they don't give a fuck what you do. You're an adult. Handle your own shit. <laughs> okay, so we have a ready function, and all it has is that it's going to set the initial position to whatever the player's current position is. So that's nice. That makes sense. Now we need a physics function. Oh, it would have just auto-completed that for me. Darn. Should have let it. Okay, so then the first thing is... If the player is not moving, well, nope, it's like that. So then if the player is not moving, oh, are you not indented enough? Oh, you have an underscore where you shouldn't. Nope, not like that. I meant to press delete, but I pressed backspace. There's an expected colon after the declaration, after you. No? Yes. Okay, so then we can get rid of your error, but not your error. Okay, all right. Interesting. You're not indented at all. You you expect a colon? You do. You do expect a colon. How did? How could I not? I'm looking for colons. I saw it on this one and not that one. What? Brain? Why are you so useless? Ugh. <sighs> It's excuse you, you're 15. Uh, that's what I corrected myself, probably before you even sent that message, that I meant legal minors. Because, like, w at least in the United States, if you if you left and, like, got hurt or something, like, they would get in trouble for letting you leave and get hurt. And get, for letting you leave and getting hurt. Oh, my God, nothing makes sense today. And the oldest guy in your class is 20 years old. Well, hopefully he can leave. As opposed to an illegal minor. Oh my god. 
Oh my god. What would that even be? Not everything has an opposite. Interesting. And yeah, is it legal as in not the opposite of illegal, but as in with regards to considering things in relation to the law? And no, he can't leave either. Oh my God, that poor guy. Damn. Damn. That's brutal. That's really interesting. Are, are the gates just like locked? So like if he, he like you can't go in or out? I, oh my God, that just seems like a bad idea. It seems like a terrible idea. Oh my god. Okay, so. If the player is not moving, then we have to process player input. Which we will have to actually write. We will have to define that that process. Which I'm assuming is going to just be changing their direction. Essentially. And then... We have an else if, and then if they aren't standing still, if they are moving, then they will have some kind of movement vector. Nope, need a space. Right. Seems reasonable. then a final else for the statement. And so then this is just if they've stopped moving. It's like if they have just stopped moving, this will trigger. And then I guess, I guess we would need that so that they're not, um, they're not like in their walk animation. That, that was one thing I was having trouble figuring out was how to make the game finish the walk animation. Um, I kept like walking into walls and like one of my feet would just be sticking out permanently when I stopped moving. It looked very silly. You could make an immigration joke. Oh, good point. Yeah, that could be an illegal minor. Sure, sure. Hmm. And you, could, you you don't think it would make it through. Come on, auto mod's not that touchy. It's fine. Auto mod's fine. Everything's fine. There there are I would wager 90% of illegal immigration jokes would get past auto mod and it would be okay that they did because they they would be okay. There's, there, there are probably some insensitive ones. Okay, it's probably more than 10% that are insensitive. There's probably some messed up, insensitive, illegal immigration jokes. School isn't literally closed during the break time. It's just a rule. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Your teacher marks someone as absent. If said someone doesn't obey after three times. <laughs> oh, damn, and they lose two days worth of pay. Oh, my God. You let me realize it on my own. That's okay. We can just, we can just let it go. It's fine. We don't need to test auto mod. Okay, so let's just make sure that all this is correct. This is, it's mad about this. Why are you mad about this? I probably typed something wrong. Doesn't look like I did. It's the colon. It's always the colon. How is it always the colon? Like, can I just not see colons? Huh. Interesting, and now it's mad back to being mad about the other two things. Okay. But that those are that's fine because we still have to actually like define these processes. And also, how do I look at the second error? There we go. Great. Yep, function move, not found in base itself. That's fine. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna add that. We're gonna we're gonna fucking figure this out. <laughs> you and your homies hate Collins. Oh my god. That's a good joke for you, Team Worm. Holy shit. Uh 
Hmm. I wonder if it's okay if I just have some extra room here. I, I, I would imagine it is. <gasps> and yeah, she's two days of missed work just for like, for being absent is so crazy. One day makes sense. But yeah, that's brutal. Two is brutal. Messed up. It's too extreme. Okay, so the next thing we're doing... is a function process player. What goes in here? Input. And here, let's get the player's Your input, direction. duh. So first, let's check what the input direction is first. So input direction dot y. We want to ensure that it's zero so that we can set input direction at x. So this ensures that we'll only move in one direction versus diagonally. So input direction dot x. And to get this value, we can do input dot is action pressed UI right. Let's go down UI right. And then we'll subtract it from the same thing, but UI left. Interesting. Since these won't be whole numbers, let's cast it to be integer. So we'll get either values negative one, zero, or positive one. And let's do the same thing with the Y direction. So we'll do if input direction dot X is equal to zero. So we'll ensure that we're only setting one direction. Let's copy over this part. And instead of UI right, we'll do UI down and UI up. So now that we've gotten any input, we can check if it's non-zero. So if the input direction is not vector to zero, then we can start moving. So we'll set the initial position. So we want to record the current tile, and then also set is moving to be true. So All right, let's let's pause there and get everything else. I'm glad this mostly makes sense so far. Oh yeah, Teamworm, I think you told me that you used a colon as a Steam name for a while, but then well, there was like it was like hard for people to type your name or for you to type your name or something. There's some reason that you were like, nope. Which uh, is, is probably a good idea. Okay, so I was typing it while he was talking. Let's double check. I bet I missed a colon somewhere. If input direction Y is zero, then input direction X input is action just pressed. Oh, I just did action pressed. Hmm, I should read about the difference between just pressed and pressed. I mean, there must be a difference. I guess maybe pressed will, it'll like wait, it'll like be a cue, like you could have something happen much further in the future, but just pressed is gonna be more immediate time-wise? I don't know, I don't know. Oh, and then at the end, he went back and changed this to be an integer value. Which, yeah, I guess that that is kind of how Pokemon works. You're going to you're going to move an individual square or not. Um, oh, actually, and this is just determining direction. So we just want to know the direction, not the value of the direction. Here. OK, so we're going to make this whole thing as an integer now. No, it's that each individual spot. Right, 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 right. We're gonna do the integer minus another integer, sure. Okay, and then let's keep proofreading. Input is action just pressed, and then UI left. Okay, so that looks okay for now. And then, are you mad at me? You're mad about that up there, that's fine, that's fine. And you're mad about this, but we'll actually let's let's just copy this now that we changed a few things. Let's paste it. I broke the indenting because I'm still not good at keeping that consistent. Okay, so this one is y then x. This one is x then y, and then we're gonna do it's up and down. All right. 
Hopefully that works out. <laughs> the situation would be, take that cap off. Take that cap off. Take that damn cap off, little Timmy. That's it. Your payment is going to the Shadow Realm. Oh my god. Cheese in the Shadow Realm. Cheese, if you ever become a teacher, please, please refer to things being sent to the Shadow Realm. Oh, okay, Team Worm. So the problem was that games can't display the weird little, um, the O with the slash through it, for sure. Hmm. Jeez, I didn't even notice you miss it. Confusing your and your. Yeah. You've become the thing you swore to destroy. You gotta just, you gotta just let people be dumb. You can't destroy people who, or rather, you can't destroy people's mistakes like that, you know? Like, there are people who are just gonna get those wrong forever. You can't, you can't fix them. It's impossible. If some of them, you certainly could. Some people actually want to learn and they're like, ah, I don't speak English well. Other people are like, it doesn't matter. But like, it does, it does. You fully understand the differences in homophones, but your fingers don't, that's fun. Oh my God. Yeah, cheese, I don't know if it'd be a good idea to tell kids you're gonna send them to the Shadow Realm. That sounds like some kind of vague threat. But like if you took, I don't know, like if you took something from somebody, like some kid is like playing with like a, a fidget spinner or something. You could tell them you, you're the, the, the fidget spinner is going to the shadow realm. That would be less of a vague. Yeah, it's vague. What the hell is the shadow realm? The, the fact that it's a threat is not vague. Just what is the Shadow Realm? It sounds creepy. It sounds like you might be like knocking somebody unconscious and kidnapping them or something. And the original people just died. Hmm. Hey! Stream Elements got the quote. That was a, that's a good, good, good dice roll, I guess, right? Because there's like four of them. The Shadow Realm was added for sensor reasons. Is that actually true, Team Worm? Because they didn't just want... They didn't just want to be murdering people. Hmm. Shit, also, what is... The Shadow Realm is like... What is that even... Is it from Yu-Gi-Oh? What the hell is the Shadow Realm even from? I don't even fucking remember. I knew at one point. It is Yu-Gi-Oh? Okay. This shit is so serious for a fucking, like, kids cartoon show. Shit's crazy. Okay, so I think we have our input directions correct. So then, the next thing to do is, uh... Is if our input direction... Nope, that's not how you spell direction. The exclamation point equal is does not equal. Not totally sure. Why are you mad? Colon. Always the colon. Ah... <sighs> I can I swear I hit enter right there. You don't need a colon. You do need another indentation, though. I I like that the Godot error uh, debugger. That's what you're called, right? Whatever. The debugger regularly is like aware that you just forgot to indent. It's pretty funny. Okay, so you get indented twice. Is moving equals true. Okay. So this is for if we are moving. Great. Let's find out what the hell we need to do. You 
remember that the meme has Jimmy Neutron's dad saying something like the main quote that you use. Whoa, for real? I didn't even know there was a Jimmy Neutron meme about it. That's pretty funny. Jimmy Neutron's dad is fucking hilarious. That's like, he's like the only character I like in that show. Yu-Gi-Oh, the Jimmy Neutron meme you use. It's a dad wearing a Yu-Gi-Oh card holder. Holy shit, I need to see this meme. Uh, Firefox? My god, my enter button is like not happy. There's either like something stuck under it or something's going on. It feels like I'm pressing it, but I'm just not. Hmm. All right. We, we have found the meme. It floats above my head. The anti-vax kid insults you, so you sneeze on his lunch. Looks like you're going to the Shadow Realm, Jimbo. Okay, all right, I see. I, I get the meme format now. Whoa. That looks fucking cool. Holy shit. Oh my god. There's an episode where they're battling and strapped into this device where a portal to the Shadow Realm gets closer as your life points go down. Oh my god. In the original, they were buzz saws that would cut off your legs. Holy shit. Yeah, Teamworm, I feel like that might be a little bit much for a six-year-old. I guess the, the Shadow version is still... It's better than the buzz saws, but it's still fucking heavy. My god. What's the dad joke Shadow Realm one? This? This is me, Dad, I'm hungry. Dad, looks like you're going to the comedy realm. Son. Oh, because he's going to then say, hi, hungry, I'm dad. He's like, I'm about to hit you with a dad joke. All right. Okay. All right. Oh, my God. I, I fucking memes are great. They're so stupid, but they're so great. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Holy shit. How have I missed this meme? There is so much of it. Oh my god, somebody made a Carl card. Devourer of croissants and gods alike. No one is safe from his mighty wrath. Holy shit, he has 2,500 attack. Bro, in my day, what, like an eight, 1,800 was good, and then there was a very rare, like, 1,850 guy. I, I bet there's so much better now. Power creep is a good way to get people to buy new stuff. Holy shit. All right. Okay, th this is not what we're here for. Oh my god, that was funny though. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. So in the next frame, it'll go down to the next branch and call move. And let's go ahead and implement the move function. So let's update the percent moved to next tile variable that we defined earlier. And this equals plus equals walk speed times delta. And delta is just the amount of time passed since the last frame. And if the percent is more than or equal to one, that means it's one whole tile moved, then we can stop moving. But let's first ensure that the position of the player is the initial position plus tile size times the input direction. So tile size is 16, and input direction will be 1 or negative 1, depending on the direction. So they'll move a whole 16 pixels. And let's set back percent moved back to 0, and is moving back to false. And let's work on the else case. Else, the position of the player is somewhere in between. So we're interpolating the position. So it'll still I love the way he says interpolating. Direction but we should also multiply it by percent moved to next tile. And this value is less than 1, so it'll cause this value to be less than 16. So it'll be somewhere in between. And that should be all. And we can go ahead and try running this. Oh, don't end the thing. Oh my god. Okay, cool. At least there's a part 2 that's animations and turning.
You get to show me it works, bro. Okay. Well, then let's let's back up a tiny bit. Uh oh, the you can hmm? I can't remember where the little tiny arrows are. We can go back by individual frames. Okay, nope, let's go back by more than that. Yeah, that's good enough. That's perfect. Okay, so let's then go back here. Get the music going again. My misspelled initial. Okay, initial position plus tile size. Input direction times percent moved to next tile. Roll the cheese! Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Team Worm, I know there's uh, there's much higher ones. I, I, I didn't say, because I'm dumb. I meant without sacrifice. One you could just slap down without a sacrifice. A four star or lower, I think. Uh, cheese, you gonna go? You're gonna go eat. Ooh, nice. All right. Well, I hope you enjoy your food and, uh, you have a nice day as well. And I will be around tomorrow. Uh, I, I hopefully you will be too. Have a good one. Now, how, how good of a job did I do here? So this is the function move function. Percent move to the next tile. Plus equal walk speed times delta. Okay, that looks correct. If percent move to next tile is greater than or equal to one. Yeah. And the position will be the initial position plus the tile size multiplied by the input direction. So then you're gonna change their position to the next tile. Sure. Okay. And then you're setting the percent move to next tile to zero because you moved them to the next tile. So they now have made 0% progress to the next tile. Sure. Sure. And then you set is moving to false. So that's interesting because shouldn't it just keep... Like what if somebody just keeps holding the direction? I guess it's just going to run right back through this on the next frame, right? Because this happens every single frame. Okay. It's an interesting... Okay. It's, it's strange that, like, the way you would logically explain something or conceptualize something doesn't always match with either the only way to code it or a way to code it it's weird to have to like think like a robot like a godot bot that's what we missed <laughs> fucking colon oh my god i can't wait till we have like ai just hanging out watching us because holy shit it, an ai could have caught all my colon mistakes real easy Okay, and so then the last line is position equals initial underscore position plus tile size times input direction times percent move to next tile. Okay. Cool. And then... I think that should be good. So then do we still... Okay, we don't have the error anymore of move. It's, it's still down here and it says that move is not found in base self, but now it is, so we're okay. Would this actually work? Oh shit, hey raiders. Oh, for some reason my uh, my raid alert didn't go off. Interesting. I was sick last week and I've forgotten how to how to stream, so maybe I didn't turn it on. Uh Kazanas, thank you for the raid, dude. Cool name. Kazanka <laughs> Nice. Uh hi Fanberg. Anbjurg? Ooh, also a cool name. Uh, anyway, welcome in, dudes. I am uh, stumbling my way through attempting to uh, make a... Trying to make, like, a Pokemon game, but I want, like, tactical combat. So, uh, and, and and I have no experience with Godot. I, this is, like, my, my fifth 
stream using Godot. I have no experience with Godot, no experience coding, uh, very little experience with pixel art. I've drawn like 12 pixel art images. Uh, so, you know, this is it's gonna be very slow. It's, it's just, we're just slow and chill. Speaking of bots, you encountered a drive through bot for the first time? Like you went to get McDonald's or some, some hopefully something better than that. And it was like an actual robot taking your order. Wow. I really don't like that. Hopefully there was a person listening, but you're going to be experimenting with Godot soon. It, it seems pretty cool. Extending it with Rust. Whoa, I don't even know what that means. What the hell is Rust? If Rust is a game, it's a programming language, a multi-paradigm general purpose programming language that emphasizes performance, the you, 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 oh, no. of course, type safety and concurrency. No idea what those two things mean. Hi, hey, Crazy Pants. Ooh, and there's like a specific, a specific project for inter integrating Godot and Rust. Provides bindings for the Godot game engine to the Rust language. Cool. Well, that's nice. Cool. Oh my god. Hold on. Hold on. I gotta bring the page up. It has a very cute, like, stylized version of the Godot icon. That's fun. Oh my god. Adorable. Cool. Well, for for now, I'm just using Godot, but it would be interesting to uh, I, I may come across problems that I want solved that can only be handled with either. Um, I think Godot already lets you use C sharp. You can already just directly code in C sharp in Godot. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely going to read about Rust. It sounds interesting. What uh, what's the reasoning behind using Rust? And and keep in mind, I know nothing. Can you explain it to a a layman, like somebody who knows nothing about coding? Because I don't. All right, and we uh, we're currently we're currently in the middle of trying to make our character move, like a character moves in Pokemon. Uh, we found. And a tutorial video about it. And honestly, I'm curious if we we just watched the first one, and now we're on to animations and turning. I'm curious if this actually will function already. Let's find out. Can we move? No, we can't. Okay. You know, honest, honestly, I, I didn't. I didn't think that guy's code was complete. But let's let's look back through it. Was it what 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 is actually missing? So he does. He does already have the like UI inputs, and currently whenever we press a directional button on the controller that that is what we input if we press right on the d-pad we are inputting ui right so maybe in his second video he's gonna be like whoops i forgot to finish something in here hmm and uh i've I experimented with like three or four different versions of movement before I decided like, no, I just want my character to actually move exactly like a Pokemon character. Um, specifically the ability to, to move on a grid, to change directions while staying on the same, um, same tile. Uh, and then after that, we're gonna try to add strafing in. I would like to be able to strafe by holding down a button so we can sidestep and backpedal. Um, it will be nice for positioning during puzzles. That's one of the things I get annoyed with uh, in Pokemon. It's a little bit clunky trying to position things, and and Pokemon doesn't have um, doesn't have things like Zelda, where you're like shooting a bow and arrow, shooting an arrow. You shoot just the arrow. You use the bow to shoot the arrow. Um, 
or like firing like a fire wand in a direction. And I want to have some kinds of puzzly things like that. So definitely, uh, definitely benefit from being able to, uh, to strafe. Okay, so hmm, the way that this is designed is complicated enough that even though I've done a few different movement scripts, I don't directly understand what is missing. Especially because it's a very strange setup to, um, to be ready to deal with the fact that the game essentially needs to be now watching whether the character is moving or not already in order to react differently, whether the character is moving. Because if the character is not moving and you press a direction, it's gonna to wanna to change the way you're facing first. So, all right, let's, let's watch his next video. And if he doesn't explain things better and we don't get a functional moving character, then um, we'll look for a different tutorial. Um, the other thing that I want to mess with is um, uh, camera controls. Right now, we have a simple 2D camera that just follows the player. Uh, ah, Kazanas, thanks for, for uh, following, dude. Uh, right now, we have a simple camera that just follows the player. But I really like the, um, the camera style in Hollow Knight, where uh, you can press... You can Hollow Knight is side scrolling. It's not top down like Pokemon. And you can press down or up on one of the sticks and like the camera will pan in that direction. And you like you see the character sprite like he'll like look up and you can see up more. You got to go. All right, dude. Have a good one. I will. I uh, will see you later. I'll come check out whatever you're working on. Uh, if I get a chance. I'm sure you'll you'll have a VOD up. I've, I've only encountered one person who does not say VOD. So uh, thanks for hanging out, dude. And thanks for the raid. Uh, so anyway, um, Hollow Knight, you can press down or up and you'll shift the camera. And it's it, like, it just feels so good. Like it feels so fucking good. Um, so what I wanna be able to do with, um, with the top down camera is kind of the same idea, but in every direction. So like, let's, uh, one of the things that I dislike be sure to come when you're online, for sure. It always, uh, it, it's so hard with like schedules. If, if I can, I will for sure. If you rate, if you stream before me normally, which is typically what happens with people who raid me, like I wake up and I eat breakfast and then I stream. So like, I might be able to catch you all eating breakfast, but I, I'm also like feeding my cats and doing other things that I have forgotten to do. Anyway, have a good one, dude. Uh, so, so, I wanna be able to shift the camera and kind of like, I I would like to be able to tilt it and add depth, but that seems like beyond my fucking scope of understanding for making a game. And it's like a small touch that, hey, maybe, maybe, maybe the next game, maybe the, the sequel to this will have that. Um, so essentially we'll just like shift the camera in whatever direction you press on the stick. Um, so that that way you can kind of like see ahead of you. I really like the way in Hollow Knight that it helps you explore by seeing what is there. And I know Pokemon is intentionally designed around the idea of having the limited screen size. They fucking love to show you, like, uh, you'll walk near a corner and you'll see, like, oh, there's, like, a, there's an item, like, over there, but it's it's blocked by trees. And so then when you're further in the level, you need to remember, oh, I've come up and right and down, and now that item that I saw it should be down and to the left. I should go check that out. Um, so I want to still keep in keep that kind of mentality in mind but also kind of allow the player if they see that that like item on the ground that they could like shift the camera a little bit and be like okay let me see more about that area let me see more about like oh i can come down to get to there so when i'm over in a different area if i can go down to get to where that item is i'll remember that better um and then the other thing i want to be able to do is zoom the camera out um i I really like the idea of being able to um, 
like I, I want to have like randomized levels like essentially things that are almost like a, like a roguelike challenge um so like imagine if you were playing pokemon but you could go to like an island and it was like okay you only bring one pokemon with you it's a low level you're going to essentially start from scratch and like complete a challenge you'll catch pokemon you'll level them up maybe at like a an increased rate um the kind of the way that like uh, MOBAs take the idea of leveling and they compress it all within a game. Um, so I want to do something like that. And then in that challenge, um, shoot, I want you to be able to like, <sighs> hmm. like see like, because the level will be randomly created, I want you to be able to, like, zoom the camera way out to, like, see what you're doing, to see where you're going, to see the different biomes that might be there. Um, I also want a big part of what I want uh, the game to be is that you'll actually see creatures going about their business. Um, so I want you to be able to, like, zoom the camera out and see, like, oh, like, Pidgeys hunting Rattatas or, like, Charmanders, like, fire-breathing and causing little, like, brush fires as they try to, like, get Rattatas to scurry out of the grass and then eat them, whatever. I want you to be able to see those things so you'll feel like you're ready to engage with them. Like, maybe you didn't, you brought only a grass type. So you zoom out and you see the Charmanders and you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm not going over there. I don't want to get into a fight with some fucking Charmanders. Um... So camera controls, I think, are going to be the next thing to focus on. Um, but yeah, let's, that, that was enough of a uh, tangent. Let's go back to the script for the player. Player script. All right. And it doesn't fucking work. Uh, but we'll, we'll just trust this guy. We're, we're going we're gonna to trust this guy. Maybe he knows what he's talking about. Let's find out. Oh, muted. Animations to our player. All right, let's restart. Welcome back. This video will go over adding animations to our player. But before that, I want to fix a small bug that I made last video. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so many tutorials have been like, here's how you do a thing. And then the next video in the series is like, um, I messed up a thing. Sorry. And I feel like that wouldn't happen if every tutorial just ended with them demonstrating the thing. But, you know, I'm a tutorial viewer, not a tutorial maker. So that's maybe not a fair criticism. And I have found quite a few helpful tutorials, so I should be appreciative, but I still think there's room for criticism. Player script. And within our process player movement input function, instead of is action just press, let's do is action pressed. Oh my God. I specifically commented that I did. I don't understand the differences between those. And I need to uh, I need to figure out the difference because, you know, there's there's a reason that those two things exist. There is a reason that that is like natively coded into Godot. So I'm just going to make a note. Uh, just pressed versus pressed. And uh, maybe I'll have time to look that up later. Maybe not, but maybe. So that way we can hold down our movement keys and the player can continue moving instead of just oh so maybe he just explained the difference so just pressed if you press down and hold on say the right button on the d-pad then you are pressing it but only at the very beginning had you just pressed it and then any moment after that though you are still pressing it you did not just press it all right interesting Okay, well, I will I'll still, still confirm that that's what that means, but it's that could make sense. It over and over again. All right, great. That should be good. Uh, you know what? Let's, let's see if that actually changes uh, our situation. Does it? Does it, Bretta? Hmm. Hmm. No, still can't move. All right. All right. That's okay. Let's uh let's keep keep going with the tutorial. And maybe I should not have deleted everything off of this script. 
Let me let me go back to the beginning of his tutorial and then jump to now for Pokemon we chapter where the movement starts. Let's find the script. Um no, so the only things he has in there is the Extends kinematic body 2D, which is that's older Godot, I believe. Now the player is a character body 2D, which is slightly different. I think it's mostly the same, but I think the character body has some extra things in it that you would expect uh, that you would potentially need for having interactions or doing things with a character. Yeah, so all that he has in here is the ready function. Okay, well, then we just we just don't have any idea why this shit doesn't work. All right. Oh, actually, hold on, hold on. Oh my god, I'm just I'm a mess. Hold on, the very bottom. Now for Pokemon. The very bottom. No, these are all just comments. Anything with a hashtag is just a comment. Okay, yeah, great. Then then we are good. Welcome back. This video will go over adding animations to our player. Now let's start creating animations for our player. So let's start off by creating an animation player within our player scene. So let's go to our player scene and then let's add an animation player node. All right, we already have this. All right, so we want to animate the idle animation and also the walk animation to start with. So let's go to animation and then click new and we'll call this hmm. idle down now we want to animate the frame property under the having an idle animation is an interesting idea i kind of just thought and this might be totally wrong i kind of just thought the idle animation or the character would just be like end the walk animation at the point where they're um where they're not their feet aren't stepping. It's like the the animation is uh is just like one foot out, no feet out, other foot out, no feet out. Um let me just freaking find one. Uh let's show him running down, sure. And then we we'll just play it right here. I need to be right there. There we go. Um so, like, the animation is just four frames. Really, it's three unique frames. It's like, hey, my left foot is out, and then, hey, none of my feet are out, and then, hey, my right foot is out, and then none of my feet are out, and then it just uh, repeats. So I kind of thought you wouldn't need an idle animation. What you would do is just tell this animation, or any any animation, really, because you can, you've got all these different animations. Oh. Bro, you got a weird little color in there. That's interesting. What's uh what's with the like pink, buddy? Oh. Huh. Okay, well I need to look into that. It might be something that when I grabbed these sprites from the internet that I didn't uh didn't extract them and uh delete all the background info. Although I think it, it came with a transparent background. So that's weird. I know um there's a thing called RPG Maker that um it's it's, it's a, a, a an engine for making games. Uda, what a surprise! With a name like RPG Maker, what did you expect? And I saw multiple Pokemon sprites uh, formatted for that, and they had a weird pink background instead of transparency. And the um, the description for it was like, "Don't mess with the pink. Don't fucking take that out. It's necessary." I I don't know why, but. It's probably specifically for uh, RPG Maker. Um, so maybe these had at one point been that way, but I swear when I downloaded them, they were just um, transparent, completely transparent. Except apparently for these tiny little spots, which should be transparent, but are uh, little pink dots. So anyway, um, so yeah, I kind of thought the way that you would do idle for a Pokemon game, because... Um, I don't know. There, there are games where there are idle animations, like in Super Mario. When you stop moving Mario for long enough, he'll like yawn and go to sleep. 
I'm like, ha, ah, that's cute. I'm not doing that. That's a lot of work. Um, so really, it's like I don't. The really the way I think of it is that there is no idle animation. There is just a good point to end the walk animation. Let me see if I can just nope. There we go. That that one that would be the right place to end the walk animation because he's just standing. So you would just like tell the thing, tell the animation play until you get to this point. That is how I conceptualize it. But maybe there's a better way to do that. I don't know. Maybe I'm right and that is the best way and this guy is wrong. I don't, I don't fucking know. The sprite node. So if you go to sprite and under the animation tab, there is a frame field. So let's set this to four. And that's the frame where the player is in their idle. Oh, so I have idle down. So let's actually go to frame one. So idle down is in frame one. And we press this key button right here and then click create. So we create a new track for the property frame. And now we have the animation set to that frame. OK, so then he is doing exactly what I thought he was going to be doing, which is that he's going to make an idle version for each of these. Uh, and, and really, I guess I, we have run and walk, but we only need we need an idle for each direction, not for each of these animations. So I guess that's worth doing. Um, especially because I can do that pretty quickly. So let's, let's go ahead and do that real quick. So then what we're going to do is, uh, we're going to take walk down and then we go to animation and we're going to duplicate it. And then, uh, we'll just call you idle, idle down. Sure. Okay. And then we want to change you. You're just like 0.2. And then we don't need any of y'all. We just need you. All right. And then let's go look at. I'll do left now, I guess. Uh, give me that music back. All right. And then let's duplicate you and you're going to be idle left. Delete everything but this guy and then we make it 0.2 second animation that loops. Yeah, they're already set to loop. Perfect. Okay, and now we're going to walk right and we're going to duplicate that for idle right. Damn, I wonder if an AI could figure this shit out. In Excel, you can like write a macro where you like record what you're doing and then you can be like, okay, repeat that for, for these other pages or for this other file. Um, and it's pretty fucking sweet. It would be so cool to have an AI just like watching me on my computer. Actually, that sounds fucking creepy, but whatever. I'm lazy. I would take the security risk in exchange for the ability to do what I'm hoping, which would be that it could see what I did with the first one and I could be like, yo, don't do this with all of them. That cool, um, that cool new physical device called the rabbit. The commercial makes it look like it can do that. But who knows if that's true. In one of the, uh, the segments, somebody is like, uh, they're like, watch how I process this photo and process every other photo I took today like that. And that sounds so crazy. One of our cats loves rubbing on this stupid microphone. And then I get poked by cat hairs. Uh, you macroed something at work and your manager was impressed. Dude's not old enough to not know how to macro. Yeah. It's it's really weird being around. Like all the people I hang out with are like like nerds for the fun of it. Like we just can't help like wanting to learn how a thing works and i feel like if you if you ever see somebody use a macro we we learned to use macros for one specific class where we had to make a bunch of um like calculations for uh the size that a foundation needed to be for buildings depending on like soil conditions and building requirements um and we essentially did a little bit of work and then used the macro to like make different versions repeated but for slightly different shapes um and like it's just so cool 
It's so fucking cool. It's kind of scary if you're like, what if this thing went wrong and I and it messed up? Hi, Mojito. Welcome. Hi. Would you like some of Tommy's hair? They're they're all over the microphone. You are reordering a bunch of spreadsheets that were made from a template. You just had a macro type in the numbers of how you wanted it ordered and then sorted. Nice. Yeah, it's it's super useful when it works. I think a lot of the times I end up with edge cases where I'm like, can I can I write a macro for this? God. This fucking cat just forced her way into my lap. Oh my god. This is like a regular thing with Mojito is that she she hops into my lap. And then like when I'm on the couch, I always recline. When she gets into my lap, she stands and waits and then I recline. And then she uh, she's like, okay, cool. Now I can lay down. But when I'm in my office chair, I can't really recline and still like use my keyboard. So I just don't. So she stands in my lap for a while and then gets annoyed because I'm not I'm not doing what she wants. And then, yep. Okay. Okay. Let me move the mic. Oh my God. You crazy girl. And then she leaves. Great. You have a bed. Sit in the bed. Get out of my fucking line of sight. I can't see, girl. Uh, I can't see. All right, we made our animations. Let's see what's next. So since it's one frame only, there's not much of a reason to use the animation player for idle. But later on, we can add more frames to animate breathing. And let's set this to be loop. Ooh, good idea, buddy. That's kind of cool. I wonder, uh, would such a small character look weird breathing? Like, unless you do some kind of, like, sub-pixel, like, minor changes. Like, I feel like the typical way to animate breathing is, like, the character's body moves and their head goes, like, up an entire pixel. With a character this small, I feel like that would look like they were like, <gasps> <gasps> instead of just like a gentle breathing which is that's it's part of why i want to make larger characters but i've been i'm like constantly going back and forth in my head about like what the what the resolution of my uh like tile sets and sprites should be like i, I want them to be like 32 by 64 for a character um of a typical Pokemon character is about is 16 by 32, but I want to go like double that or even double that um, to be able to show more detail. But then like, it's just so much work. It's so much more work. And then the, the bigger you go, the, the more you lose the kind of like cutesiness of pixel art. And the more you just looks like, like kind of a shitty low resolution, regular drawing. Um, it's, it's frustrating. The, the real answer is get good at doing low resolution pixel art, but like I'm not I'm not good. So I'm trying to like as a crutch, I'm trying to be like, well, what if I just made it bigger? Then I could do more detail. It would be easier for people to understand what I'm drawing. But like, no, that's not the answer. Not the answer because you lose the thing that makes it the thing that it is. Brutal. As well. Now let's go ahead and do the rest of the idle positions. So we can just duplicate the current one we have and rename it. And instead of idle down, we can do pain. Okay, so we know we know what's going on here. Yep, 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 yep. Create a new track. Our second frame. So let's click on this. Okay, so now he's doing walking. And duplicate. And now it has a looping effect. And we can test it out by pressing the play button here. Mm hmm He and didn't loop it though. Set the looping button here. There you go. Now let's press play. Cool. Looks good. It's interesting. I I just brought in the sprite on my own and then kind of gravitated toward 0.8 seconds for four frames. It's interesting that that just seems like it just looks right. Like I, I had one one second and then tried 0.8 and then 0.6 and then also 1.2 and was like, no, 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 0.8's, 0.8's the one. Let's do the walk up animation now. Let's duplicate the current. And okay, he's doing walk up. Yep, 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 yep. And then left and right. Cool. Okay, this I don't know about. 
and you'll notice there is a warning sign and that warning sign is that we did not set our animation node yet. So we can do that by going to the anim player and clicking assign and setting the animation player that we just worked on. Okay, but why? Root, let's create a new type of tree root and we'll create the animation node state machine. That sounds really cool. Okay, so I think I'm gonna just go ahead and follow along with this before I understand why he's doing it. Because again, we have a backup saved. And this seems this seems kind of cool. This seems like like maybe the idea is to very easily know whether we're idle or walking or running or whatever else. And we'll use this to change between states, idle and walk. And later on, maybe we'll okay. have running as well. And if you notice, oh, yeah. there's an animation tree window that appears at the bottom of the screen. And there's text in red that says animation tree is inactive. So let's go ahead and click the active field and set it to be on. And now let's create our idle state. So right click and create a blend space 2D. And let's rename this to be idle. And if we click on the idle box, we can also set this to be toggle autoplay. So this is the animation state that we'll play on start. And let's click on the pencil icon. Cool. And here we have to set our individual animations that we created in animation player. First, let's set the blend type to be discrete. So it's the little dots. And that's because we're working with frames. So individual pictures rather than bones or any of that sort. And then let's click on this icon here where it says create points. So now we want to assign our animations to specific points. And on the left hand side, we want to assign the idle left animation. All right, let's let's catch up to him. This seems super interesting. This like I didn't think that the tr the animation tree would be like conceptualized in like a a grid like physical space, but like of course it would be like it's like a family tree. It it takes physical space. All right. So we have an animation mm -hmm. tree. Uh what we need to do then is assign animation player okay and then the thing that he added was new animation node state machine you know what let's let's get the music let's just lower it a little bit it can just be in the background all right uh oh connecting to chat obs don't do this to me great welcome to the chat room all right i'm back only a momentary hiccup. Okay, so. So now we have done that. And then what did he do right after that? He made the state machine. And now mine looks different than his. We're in newer versions of Godot than he is. This could be bad. Hmm. So interestingly, we don't get the same uh, initial bug that he did where it says it's inactive. Huh. Interesting. Okay, so currently his transition is by default set to immediate. So I think for now, we'll try to imitate that. But then... Okay. And I still right-click. Okay, so I still have the same options that he has when right-clicking. And great, I can drag these around. All right, so let's go back to the video and see what exactly he's going to do. You know what? This guy's a quiet talker, so I'm going to lower like just a tiny bit. All right. Oh, let me back you up. 
Oh no, I muted and you. If you notice, there's an animation tree window that appears at the bottom of the screen. And there's text in red that says animation tree is inactive. So let's go ahead and click the active field and set it to be on. And now let's create our idle state. So right click and create a blend space 2D. And let's rename this to be idle. Okay. Let's do that. Add blend space 2D. Call it idle. Cool. And if we click on the idle box, we can also set this to be toggle auto play. So this is the animation state that we'll play on start. And let's click on the pencil icon. Okay. Ooh, I don't have that visible. I don't have those same tools visible. Ooh. Interesting. Okay, so then let's let's hunt around. Let's hunt around a little bit. So weirdly, we start with a start and an end, unlike previous versions of Godot. Don't know why. Probably because it makes more sense to have that. And more often than not, you would want it. I, I could see for any kind of animation, having a start and an end makes sense. Um, but let's go look at, so probably not output, probably not the debugger. Search results, that's interesting. Definitely not audio, but that's cool. Interesting, we can just look at all of the different animations, okay. So that's an interesting thing. Are we still, I don't understand the way necessarily that Godot organizes things yet. Like when I look at this animation, I'm looking at it because I'm looking at the animation tree and I have told the animation tree to use the animation player animations. Okay, that seems reasonable. Okay, so it's not, it's not going to be anywhere else. If I right click you, I don't have additional options. I want to set you as the default. Yeah, it's like a little arrow situation. What if, oh, I, I don't even know how to delete the start option. Okay, so what about the inspector? What if I click you, we come over to here. There is like nothing in the inspector. Ooh, okay. All right, we might need to uh, look this up uh, as a separate thing. Hmm. And like for now, conceptually, ooh, I was gonna say it doesn't seem that bad to um to just not have the animation tree and to just put in the player code like whatever the players um last direction was like if they were running to the right wherever they last moved um that would be their idle or i guess it'd be it'd be like whatever they last pressed because it's not just if they moved right but also if they pressed right but didn't move right you'd want them to first shift the direction they're looking and then you would want them to idle by just continuing to look right um I feel like you could handle that without the tree. Hmm. Let's look at if we go to edit this. No triangles exist, so no blending can take place. Whoa. Interesting. And there isn't anywhere here to note this as the default. All right, let's 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 keep going and see what the hell he does because I'm curious. I don't know if I'll be able to actually use it though, which is, you know, disappointing, but this stuff is so interesting. I just want to like learn all of the different ways that people do things so I can find out the best way to do things. And, and it's like, it's so much harder to learn as I'm older, as I'm getting older and older. 
I just need to like see so many different examples to like reinforce how to utilize these to me non-intuitive things. Information state that we'll play on start. And let's click on the pencil icon. And here we have to set our individual animations that we created in animation player. First, let's set the blend type to be discrete. So it's the little dots. And that's because we're working with frames. So individual pictures rather than bones or any of that sort. So let's click on this icon here where it says create points. So now we want to assign our animations to specific points. And on the left hand side, we want to assign the idle left animation. And on the right hand side, we want to assign the idle right animation. Interesting. Still don't understand what we're doing. And at the top, we'll do idle down. And at the bottom, idle up. And let's make sure that the points lie on negative one or one. So let's click on the, the clicker right here. And then let's click on this point. And you'll notice it's actually 0 0.9. So let's set this to be negative one. Hmm. And I think the rest look fine as well. And we're done with the idle state. So let's go back to root here and let's create a new state for our walk animations. Rename this to walk and let's click on the pencil icon and we do exactly the same thing we did with the idle state. We'll set the blend to be discrete and let's create some points for the walk animations. Walk left, walk right, walk down and walk up. Why you gotta put up down? And let's add some That's weird. Transitions between our that. So from idle, we can start walking, and from our walking state, we can go back to idle. So pretty simple. So we click on Just the like draw arrows. Next nodes icon. Cool. And we click on idle, and we go to walk state, and then walk. We go to idle state. Cool. Okay. So let's let's get that set up. And I th I think I think I have an idea. Maybe this is a terrible idea. But what if, oh shit, how do I get out of editing this? I was thinking instead of making an idle thing and setting it as the like default, I should just use the starting one and rename it idle. Okay. Root maybe? Yeah. Okay. Great. Great. Oh my God. I'm, I feel like I'm slowly figuring out how to intuitively move through this. Uh, how would I there's a trash can great okay so then can we rename you can I edit you I can't edit you okay let's let's can we undo destroying idol bam I thought I was so smart that I was going to rename the starting thing interesting and we can't edit it damn Okay, I wish I was like a billionaire and I could just like call the Godot people and be like, hi, I'll give you like a billion dollars. Just send a person who knows this engine to hang out with me and teach me and to answer my stupid questions. Like, why you put start thing here? Old Godot no have start thing. Why you put start thing? What it do? Okay, so my idea, it was wrong. That's okay. Lots of ideas are wrong. They're just ideas. Uh, so then what we want to do is we were going to add an animation. And so then we're going to start with idle because we're in the idle one. So that's where left goes. And then over here, we want to add right. And then up here is down, which is like fucking. Don't be like that. And then down here is up. And then how did he see the actual X chords, X and Y chords of what he was doing? Mute him real quick. You just click on it. Damn it. Now, I, I fucking, I swear, I swear you commented on this. How do I, how am I missing this? 
Oh, I'm looking at the walk ones. Do, do, do. Okay, so he adds each of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. You just click on the mouse. Just click on the mouse, duh. I need to experiment more. Ooh, I think we might have nailed him. Hey. That's confusing. There we go. Okay, yeah, great, great, great. Everything is in the right position. Okay. And so then now we can go back to root. And then we're going to make a new one. So can we just, can we like duplicate you? <sighs> well, there's no obvious way to duplicate you. Fine. Fine. Can, can I drag you though? Thank you. Okay. So then you are going to be walk. We'll need to do a run as well. We need the blend to be whatever this is. Was Did you say it was like interpolate? Maybe I'm just thinking that's what he said because I weirdly like the way he says interpolate. Uh, so now we can just right click here and then add animation. Okay, so now we're doing walk. Called this walk. So your walk left and then we'll come over here and do an animation. Oh, this is not going to be in the right position. Your walk right. Oh, maybe it did. Maybe it snapped. Okay, and then weirdly you are walk down. You right here get to be walk up. Sweet. Okay. And then what? Got this set. This is good. We should check. I'm on the mouse. Let me click you, sir. Negative one. 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 And negative one. Okay, cool. Great. So now we can go back to root. And then we can connect these. No, oh no, oh no, wait, no, not that, not that. Uh, animation node state, hey, I wanted to read that. What the fuck is happening? <laughs> Holy shit, so this seems wrong. I don't know if you can tell on the stream video, but um, he is he is fidgeting, He's vibrating at warp speed. Okay, how do I just break this connection then? Hmm. Also, can I just bin you? No, you can't bin start. Okay. You can't bin end, can't bin end. Okay, so then what the, what the fuck? Interesting. I'm gonna rewatch and see what the hell he did. And let's click on the pencil icon and we do exactly the same thing we did with the idle state. We will set the blend to be discrete. Discrete blend. Points for the walk animation. Love a discrete blend. And let's add some transitions between our states. So from idle, we can start walking. And from our walking state, we can go back to idle. So pretty simple. So we click on the connect nodes icon and we click on idle and we go to walk state and then walk, we go to idle state. So if must be nice, must be nice to not have your thing break when you do that. Animations get more complicated where we have run, we have jump, then these transition nodes would make more sense. But for now, we're done with the animation tree and let's go back to our player script. All right, he's got his whole player script. Let's let's maybe worry about this later. Let's review his player script. And you know what, just for shits and giggles, one more time. <laughs> Do that. Whoa, no, don't don't delete. Just control Z that. Thank you. Okay. He looks fine right here. 
What if I connect this to like end? Oh. Oh, it just like won't. No, it will. It will. He idles, he walks, he ends. Do I need to connect start? Hmm. Okay, well that stopped it from going crazy, but who knows now if this is, if any of this is okay. All right, we're just gonna leave it. Uh, I would like to look back at his player script. Just to compare sources. Okay, so. Damn, we can only see from line eight and lower. Brutal. Alright, variable is moving equals false. Variable percent moved to next tile is zero. Then he has the ready function, the initial position equals position. Then he has the physics process. If his moving is false. Ooh, I think he changed this. To process player movement? Hmm. That might be a cleaner, a cleaner thing there. When I was looking at different movement tutorials, there were different ways of, um, essentially processing movement. Um, and it's like, like there's a function called like move and slide. That's better than just regular movement. And it's designed that if you like walk against something, you can like, like if a player walks against a wall, they can easily like slide up or down the wall. Um, so there are multiple different ways to actually process player movement. Interesting. I haven't seen this before. Process player movement input. Huh. Well, our, our script doesn't work currently. So why don't we try this? Process player movement input. Else if input direction. Exclamation point equal sign vector two zero. I swear is is not equal to. I would like to know that. Okay, that is the not equal to. Great. Great. And move delta else is moving equals false. Right. And then, yeah, okay. So he, he totally changed this. Oh my God. Is this why I get nothing done? Cause I'm such a stickler for like how things should be done. And then like, I just lose myself in the weeds of everything. You can't, you can't do it unless it's perfect. Well, then it never gets done. Maybe that's a lesson. Okay. So then he changed this function to process player movement input. I misspell you. You're still mad at me. Expected end of statement after expression. Found a colon instead. Oh, no. Oh, no. I shouldn't have a colon there. <laughs> Book. Uh, okay. Now I'm having problems with my colons from both ends. Uh. Okay. So we changed that. But then all of this is still the same. If input direction y is zero, input direction x is equal to the integer of UI right minus UI left, but specifically input is action press UI right minus the integer of input is action press UI left. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then the next one is the same, except it's down and up and X and Y are flipped. Yeah. Okay. And then input direction does not equal vector two zero. Then initial position equals position. Is moving equals true? Sure. If your input direction isn't zero, you are moving. <laughs> okay. And function move delta. Set move to next tile. It's walk speed times delta. Percent move to next tile is greater than or equal to one. Then do this thing. 
Position equals initial position plus input direction times tile size. Now, is our input direction normalized? It is an integer. But, like, how does... Ooh, I don't know how Godot handles integers. Maybe it's very obvious that, like, if my input was, like, 0.5 in the x direction, but it's like I can only take integers, will it change that to 1? Or will it keep it at 0? I know there is a command to normalize uh, vectors. I, was, I used it for one of the move functions that I had tried out. I think the the best one, the like eight direction eight eight directional movement with animations for it, but then when I decided to switch to Pokemon movement conceptually because I think that fits better than uh I don't need that anymore. But maybe, maybe actually I do. I don't know. Right, then you set percent move to next tile to zero. Set is moving to false. Okay, so like 99% of this makes sense from a, um, like examining each piece makes sense. But as far as seeing it, how, seeing how it all fits together as an entire piece of a puzzle, it's definitely hard to follow. Okay, so everything does look the same. Let's just let's just try it out. I, I bet we still can't move. All we changed was that function name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just in case my controller's messing up, we'll try the keyboard. Nah, nothing. All right. So I guess maybe I should um, before I just abandon this. I'm gonna look uh, at what changed from Godot three to Godot four in relation to some of these specific things, and see if maybe. Maybe there's some obvious uh, thing that's different that I can that I can adjust to make this functional, because in th in theory this has like everything I want. It has exactly what I want, limiting the movement to uh, left, right, up, down, limiting it to the grid, and then also allowing for a change in uh, in direction, but uh, with, without actually moving a tile. But it doesn't currently work, so, uh, you know, we'll figure it out. We'll get there. Let's keep going. Now, at the top of the script, let's get access to the animation tree. On ready RAR, and let's call it anim tree equals dollar sign and animation tree. We also want to get access to the animation state. So let's call it anim state, and this is within the anim tree. So animtree.get and we have to give in a string for the property. So if we go to animation tree and open up parameters and hover over playback, it'll give us the property name parameters slash payback. So let's type that in here. So now let's scroll down and figure out where we should play idle and walk. In our second case, here when input direction is not equal to zero and we call move. I think this is a good place to call our walk state. So we do anim underscore state dot travel and the state is called huh. walk. And then in our else place, we can call the same thing, but with idle. But this isn't it. We also have to set the direction. So remember our blend space 2D, we have to set which spot in that graph and we can use the direction to do that. So within process player input, we can go under our if case here and set the direction. So anim tree dot get, and we need to figure out the property for that blend space 2D. So let's go to animation tree and then under parameters and under idle, we want to set the blend position. So if we hover over it, it'll say parameters, idle, blend position. So that's okay. what we want to adjust. Parameters, idle, blend position. Let me make sure that I got it correct. Yeah, looks good. 
and we now want to set a value. So it's an X and Y. So this actually is the same type as our input direction, which is a vector two. So we can put input direction here. And let's do the same thing for our walk state. That's so cool to, um, to have situations where you can just actually copy a different thing. It's just literally the actual input direction because it's just numbers and you need numbers of that format. You can just plop it in there. Oh wait, actually it's not get, it's set. We're setting the value, not getting. So let's make that change. Right, good point. You're getting input also, direction and then setting idle state based here on as that. Well, when the direction is zero. So we'll just do atom state dot travel. And that should be all. So let's try playing this. Oh, you son of a bitch. If it were. Oh, you bastard. Our looks like he's moving. Cool. It doesn't work in New Godot. Pokemon. We're actually able to turn without moving. Right now, if we press a direction one time, we'll move automatically. But if we want to turn, we want to stay in the same spot. So let's do mm. a turning animation and the ability for the player to stay in the same spot without moving. To do the turning in one spot, let's first add the turning animations. So let's go to animation player and let's add a new animation. And we'll call this turn down. It's an actual- and This is gonna be a fairly We need an actual turning animation? Oh, it's just gonna be one you're looking one direction and the next you're looking the other direction short animation so we'll set the length to be 0 0.1 second and we'll set the snap to be 0 0.05 seconds holy so shit have two frames in it and let's go to the sprite node and then let's find so if you notice the frame is actually changing by itself and that's because we have animation tree enabled so let's disable that and then rather than setting it in the editor Let's actually set it in our script so we can leave it off while we're editing the frames. So we can do that by doing anim tree in our ready function and accessing the active property and setting it to true. Cool. Now let's go back to our animation player and let's... Oh, holy shit. Okay, that's actually the fact that you can just do that. I was trying to figure something else out and was like, can I just do that? Can I? Is there a way to just turn a thing on in the inspector? Great. I wish you could just I wish you could just say on not true I get it I gotta I gotta speak the Godot language but and fuck sprite. so turn down would be starting at zero frame zero let's key that create a new track go to the next timestamp and go do the first frame so it's just a quick turn animation when they're turning down Let's duplicate. Oh, yeah, I guess that's a good point. They don't just change their direction. They do, like, move their foot. Like, the actual animation plays of them moving their foot. Okay, I, that's... It, honestly, if if none of this works and I have to, like, redo the script from the ground up, uh, just conceptually, I'm glad that I learned that. So, sure. Okay, then let's go ahead and do that. We're going to need a bunch of new animations. So then actually, the best way to do it is going to be, we're just going to, yeah, change each of the, I guess the walk ones, if I remember right, run is the same as walk, except like the, um, there's some slight shading differences to try to imply that the character's foot is moving out more. So we shouldn't. I don't think we would need a different animation. I should just should just be a nice no matter what changing direction should just be a nice adjustment of the uh walking animation. Okay, so then we're going to duplicate you. Uh we're just going to do turn down. Or what? Okay, and but then this will take too long and so then what he did is oh my god he made it take point one. i guess you uh, that feels like it's going to be too fast 
but we do, we want it to be really fast. And then he set the snap to 0 0.05. Crazy. So then we have room for both of these. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah, I guess that's, I guess it makes sense. All right. So now we have turned down. Let's get walk left. Let's duplicate it. Call you turn left. Let's change this to point one. Honestly, I want it to be point two. I feel like point two is right, but thinking about it when you're playing Pokemon, it is a really quick little like boop boop and you're turned. Like you blink and you'll miss it. Okay, then this is still good, right? Because you're going to see his little foot and then he's just standing idle. Okay. All right. And now we're doing right. Duplicate it. Turn right. It's just going to take 0.1 second. 0 0.05 snap size. Move that down to there. Delete these. And we're good. I wonder what that line means that connects them. Feels like I should, should probably figure out what that means. Uh, and then the last one is up. Uh-oh. Walk up. Did I mess you up? Hold on. Uh-oh. I might have I might have messed up walk up. When did I? Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, well. That's weird. All right, let's fix that real quick. I know how to fix that. So we go back to the sprite. And then... It's... It's so cool. You put in a sprite sheet and then you tell it how many, like, it's like three frames wide by eight frames down tall. I don't know. And then it like, it just shows you one frame at a time and then you, you navigate to which frame you're looking at. Okay. That's the wrong one. Okay. So we want that. And then we just click the key button. It's going to, oh, are you guys like on top of each ship? Well, now hold on. Hold on. Why did you erase the old one? It's so funny to be in this weird state of like, I know how to do some things, but have am not confident on any of them. Well, then, then, then that's the wrong direction, bro. And then screw things up and have no idea why I screwed things up. Okay. You're walking up, my guy. You're starting at zero. And then you're doing one. Great. And then... Also, this needs to be point eight. How did... What did I do? Why did I... How did I mess this up? I'm going to have to go through and check all the other animations and make sure they're right. Like, what the heck? Fucking weird. Okay, and then... Now we need the third frame in the walk cycle. Oh. Oh. This... Uh, frame number two, X equals two, is the third frame because there's zero, one, and two. Oh. Computers. Okay, and then we could just right-click you and click duplicate. Cool. You loop already. You're supposed to take 0.8 seconds. Oh. Right. Right. So we want each of these every point two. How did, what did I do to mess this up? Oh my god. All right. We'll check all the other uh, the running animations in a second. Maybe I just didn't finish it. Did I, I finished all the others and just didn't? Nope, not new. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, turn. We are turning up. It should take 0.1 seconds. The snap size of 0 0.05 seconds. You're done. You're done. Goodbye. Great. Yeah, we probably don't want them looping. The next option is like back and forth. Cool. It's really interesting to uh, to be thinking about like puzzles and things for the game that I'm making. I should just refer to it as Scribe. Not sure what the first word in it will be. Either symbiote 
or something like that. Probably Symbiote Scribe is going to be the name of the game. Anyway, it's interesting the way that I've been trying to conceptualize puzzles and then learning new tools, learning the things that Godot can do has made me come up with ideas for puzzles because now I'm like, oh, I could easily program that. Like, how would I use this function? Oh, I could make a puzzle like this. Um, learning how collision works. There's ways where you can make things collide with certain things and not other things. And then that specifically led me to thinking about like, um, there are games where like you can take an item, like if you have like a red gem and you can take it through red walls, but not blue walls and a blue gem that you can take through blue walls, but not red walls. Um, and then moving where the walls are, you're trying to like get both gems to the end of the level. Um, and then I just realized like, oh, I could just, I, now I know how to program that. And like, exactly. That's fucking cool. Damn. Uh, I, I don't, I don't know if the, the looping back and forth thing will, will be anything, but it might be cool for an animation. Hopefully I can remember that and keep it in my back pocket and maybe make a cool animation. Maybe not even a cool animation, just a silly one. Ooh, I wonder, is there a way to like randomly loop? You might need an animation tree. Like if I wanted to sometimes fully loop it, sometimes go back and forth. Damn. All right, so I wanted to check. Uh, actually, let's, let's just check everything. Okay, so all the idols should just be an individual thing in their direction. Did I not? I didn't make an idol up. What? Wh well, no. Now, ho but, 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 but hold on. But didn't I add idol up in the animation tree? Did I not in this guy? Let me. Right, I'm trying to <laughs> trying to draw connections. Weren't you idol up? How do I? Why can't I click on you? Let me click on you. Your run up. What the? Fart? Oh my god. What's wrong with me? Okay. Well, we need to make an idle up. So then let's adapt it from, uh, let's take walk up. You know what? That's what I did. That's why walk up was messed up. Because instead of making a new one, I just skipped that part. Okay. All right. I feel one shade less stupid. So duplicate you. You're now idle up. Fuck. And then it's just this guy. And then let's make sure that matches the rest of these. You loop and you're at point two. Yeah. Okay. Found a different problem than I thought I was going to find. Let's look at run down. Run down looks good. Run left looks good. Run right looks good. Run up looks good. Okay. And that actually, now that we know why a walk up was fucked up, that seems pretty, pretty solid reasoning to think that not everything will be fucked up. Cool. Great. Okay. Uh, so now let's go back to our animation tree, which is might not even be worth doing, but, uh, I have to click on you again? I do. That's so weird that you're like highlighted like I've already clicked on you, but clicking on you changes this information. Oh, that's going to be so hard for me to get used to. Okay, so you're just idle up. All right. Okay, one, one moment. I have some gross crap to cough out of my fucking throat, and I don't want to do it uh, unexpectedly. BRB. was remarkably quick it is uh it's been a long time since i've had like like mucus phlegm in the like upper part of my chest where like like if you smoke weed you you like you'll get a cough right and maybe it's only like once or twice if you just take take a hit don't smoke weed a lot i smoke weed sometimes probably shouldn't i have asthma uh and then and then like when you feel like you need to cough you like really just breathe it all in and uh cough and there's like crap from everywhere in your lungs a little bit comes out feels okay 
the the situation I'm in right now is there's only stuff like up here. It's like just right here. And so if I do a big deep cough, it doesn't do anything. I have to do this like ah, like this weird like tiny cough that brings a bunch of loosens a bunch of stuff up high. And and then then do a big cough. It is it's the weird it's oh it's so weird. Ah. Anyway. It's fucking lame. Respiratory infections are lame. Uh tangent has me losing my train of thought okay so we did we 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 fixed the problems that we caused that and and it may not even be necessary to fix this because we still don't have a functional movement system now i think i'm gonna go ahead and copy the rest of this guy's uh functionality and so it seems like what he's gonna do next is add turning um into the animation trees and then we'll add that into the script and then uh off stream i will do some do some digging and try to figure out what the hell i have to do to make this actually function and also interesting he called out um changing direction which i kind of thought this had already had that idea baked into it but clearly it didn't clearly i need to understand godot coding better but we all knew that we all fucking knew that the fucking there's probably going to be one person who watches this that actually understands godot and is like that guy is fucking that guy's wrong all right so so first he does the animations which we have done and then uh and then we'll see See what he does next. This player state. Curly braces, and we can define our states here. So that our first state can be idle, our next state can be turning, and our last one can be walking. Whoa. And let's also create an enum for facing direction. So which direction our player is facing. Left, right, up, and down. Now let's create corresponding variables to store the state and the facing direction. Cool, so okay. And we can default this to be player state dot idle. And also facing direction. And we'll default this to be facing direction dot down. If we scroll down to our physics process function, we can add another if condition. If player state is turning and in this case let's just skip everything else and just return so do nothing for now <laughs> just the second if case to be else if now let's go to process player movement input function so here we can decide if we need to turn or not and that would be when we have an input direction so let's go under here but before that let's actually set the anim tree for turn so we have to add this state to animation tree. yeah why not do Actually, that first that right yeah why not do that first bro right click so i have it's uh, it's really funny feeling like i'm an unorganized person but that I, i'm i'm too unorganized so then anybody who's less organized than me is like no you're unacceptable um, okay, I'm already in here waiting for him. Great. Nodes enabled, so that's why I can't right click. So let's click on the mouse pointer. Now let's right click, add button space 2D. Rename this to be turn. And we can add our transition nodes right now too. So we can turn from idle and also walk. Now let's click on the pencil icon within turn. Let's set our blend to be discrete and let's add some points so turn left turn right turn down and the last one turn up make sure this guy is on negative one great now let's go back to our code now that animation tree for turn is set hold on buddy i'm slower than you all right Turn up goes down, turn down goes up. I wonder what happens if you don't actually have these at 
set at points zero one and one zero and zero negative one. I wonder if they would actually not do anything. You fully have the, the stick pressed in. Okay, great. So then now I think the thing to do is gonna be, we're gonna need to like back up quite a bit and copy his code bit by bit. Yeah, man, I wish he would just have it pasted. He honestly might have it in the project files. Let's, let's go snoop around. Ooh, cool, a landing effect with dust. Cool. God, there's 42 forks of this? Holy shit. Hmm. Add Pokemons to party screen. Bro, the plural of Pokemon is Pokemon. Don't be like that. Uh, I just... Okay, so does he just have... No releases published, damn. He does have the code, but what is... So what is his main... I guess what I would want is the player. Does he just have the player? He does. Okay. I mean, we could just fucking copy-paste that code, baby. Oh my god, it's like... Oh lord! He, he, he did a lot more stuff. Damn. Well, here's some stuff about idle animations. Holy shit, this is super interesting. There's so much here. Blend points? Blend mode? With all the turning animations and the walking animations? My god. Wow, dude. Okay, so I mean, I was thinking like maybe he'd have, we could just copy paste easily the things he's doing right now, but clearly that's not the case. So maybe, maybe we back up and uh, wherever he starts changing the code, I did not do that yet. So then let's, let's go ahead and do that. And then, then we're going to need to uh, obviously troubleshoot it and figure out why it doesn't work. In Godot 4. Let's see, how old is this? Please be, like, not, like, five years old. Okay, two years old. So he's probably using Godot 3. Very likely. Uh, does his page say anything about that? I feel like, go back to the main page. Languages. Whoa, it's 90% GD script, 9.4% GAP. Interesting. God damn it, there's so many cool things I want to learn about. Anybody out there is a vampire, come bite me. I need to live forever. Well, I need the potential. I, I get it. You could a stake through the heart and you're fucked. Oh shit, does that mean like if a building collapsed and a vampire fell, they would get, they could like get impaled on a piece of wood and die? That's brutal. <laughs> Team Worm, are you a vampire? <laughs> Come bite me, dog. It's, it really doesn't sound that bad to not be able to go in the sun in exchange for immortality. It's fine, I can shop at night. The grocery store we go to is open 24-7. Some other things might be inconvenient. Oh, there's some birds outside on the window. Outside of my window. They're not on the window. They're on the tree that's outside the window. Anyway. Anyway. Let's find where he actually codes. Okay, so first he does these animations, which we did. And then he did the animation tree. Okay. 
And so then this is the stuff we have not changed that he changed. So then we're gonna hop over to our script and we're gonna see what are you gonna do, buddy? At the top of the script, let's get access to the animation tree. On ready rar, and let's call it anim tree equals dollar sign and animation tree. We all Okay. Well, that makes sense to me in theory. We need we need to talk to the animation tree. It's interesting that like, like, I kind of wish if you didn't change the names of things, it would just autofill, uh, it would autofill that statement. It'd be really nice to just be able to very quickly like fill out this statement. But I, I you know what, I bet if I just type the dollar sign and then ANI, yeah, animation tree is the second option. Okay, so like honestly, a decent portion of this is like auto filled. All right, that's cool. Also, want to get access to the animation state, so let's call it anim state, and this is within the anim tree. So anim tree dot get, and we have to give in a string for the property. So if we go to animation tree, and open up parameters and hover over playback, it'll give us the property name parameters slash payback. So let's type that in here. Ooh, let me see if that is still actually true for me. Parameters, playback. Oh, no, it's not. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. That specific, oh no, okay, I'm, I'm looking at the wrong thing, okay. It is still called parameters slash playback. Okay, great. So let's type that in here. All right. So now cool. let's scroll down and figure out where we should play idle and walk. Wait, hold on, buddy, one sec, one sec. Nope, 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 nope. Do you have colons? Mm, nope. So now let's scroll down and figure out where we should play idle and walk. In our second case here, when input direction is not equal to zero and we call move, I think this is a good place to call our walk state. So we do anim underscore state dot travel and the state is called walk. And then in our else place, we can call this Right, so we're not calling any specific animation, we're calling the tree. And I did name it walk with a capital W. And you know what, actually, I'm going to change that real quick. I prefer to avoid all kinds of grammar. <laughs> From looking at other people's videos, I absolutely prefer don't capitalize things and don't use spaces, use underscores, because then it's so deliberately obvious when there's a space or not. Definitely uh, what I prefer. Maybe at some point I would realize like I'd prefer caps. Maybe if you had like multiple word states, it might be nicer to have caps in there, especially if you're trying to not have spaces. But I don't know. I like I like a lack of all grammar so that I don't miss it because these aren't sentences. They are just things I'm referring to. All right. Same thing, but with idle. But this isn't it. We also have to set the direction. So remember our blend space 2D, we have to set which spot in that graph and we can use the direction to do that. So within process player input, we can go under our if case here and set the direction. So anim tree dot get and we need to figure out the property for that blend space 2D. So let's go to animation tree and then under parameters and <laughs> under idle, we want to set the blend position. So if we hover over it, it'll say parameters, idle, blend position. So that's what we want to adjust. Ooh, parameters, and it auto fills it. Idle, blend 
position. Let me make sure that I got it correct. Nice. Yeah, looks good. And we now want to set a value. So it's an X and Y. So this actually is the same type as our input direction, which is a vector two. So we can put input direction here. And let's do the same thing for our walk state. Oh wait, actually it's not get, it's set. We're setting the value, not getting. So let's make that change. And then also we can play our idle state here as well when the direction is zero. So we'll just do anim state dot travel idle. And Oop. that should be all. So let's try playing this. And our player looks like he's moving. Cool. This is, this is so nice for you, buddy. Ooh, interesting. Okay, so then real quick. I think I copied him. But at the top, our our debugger is mad at us. So what's your deal? Line six is unexpected identifier in class body. Hmm. Is on ready not used anymore? Is it that? It is that. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to Google search for that real quick. Oh my God. So of course I find a, a thing where someone's like, Hey, I'm trying to use on ready and I'm getting the same error that that Seth is getting. And the, the first response, I just saw you're using 4.0. You do realize that 4.0 is not even alpha stage yet. Ugh. Fucking. Ugh. You should only be using 4.0 if you're a developer who's working on it. Oh, bro. All right. <laughs> Someone else said I'm bumping this because good old 4.0 entered alpha and I'm running into the same issue. Okay, I should just... You guys can see. Why not? Why not? Mm, a lot of the documentation's not complete. Okay. The issue here is that on ready is now an annotation and the line above would be written at on ready variable. Okay. So it's just, it's the same thing with export. The annotation is different and you put an at. Man. Okay. Okay. Then let's undo that. Ah, nope, 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 nope. Redo that. Are you happy even about that now? Great. Okay. So now let's go look at the last problem, which is this else statement. This is a function. <sighs> Should have read the problem. I immediately went to start just reviewing everything up here, but no. Always read the problem. They expected there to be a colon. All right. Was that like 50% of my problems are colon related? Oh no. Now there's a new problem. Line seven. This. Identifier parameters not declared in the current scope. Identifier playback. Not declared in the current scope. Whoa. Interesting. Well, well, let me double check that that is how he wrote that. This is the very beginning. Property is parameters slash playback. And that's exactly what it said for me. Let's go double check. Oh, I'm still like right here. This parameters slash playback. 
not declared in the current scope. <sighs> I understand what those words mean in a general English way. Hmm. Like, that's a property of this thing. Get me that property. Bruh. Ah. It's a string. Okay, I don't... Don't need that. Ah! Deleted the wrong thing. Okay. There we go. I feel like uh I feel like my dad trying to like do things on his computer when he sees he's like fucking old and never interacted with technology and like he never found computers fun so he like just fucking trying to get him to like update chrome or shit like that used to be like a fucking headache and i just i, I feel like i fully understand how he feels it's like i i know i'm not doing it right but what is right? Oh, it's some weird arbitrary thing I didn't think of. Makes sense. Once you know, it makes sense. But when you don't know, it's just like, but something's wrong. Okay, so well, now we are error free, but our code doesn't work. That's fine. We're going to keep going with this and then uh, we'll get this set up. And then I'll do some uh, in between stream homework. And then by next week, I'll either abandon this and maybe we'll try something new uh, or I'll have it running. All right, unmute you. So let's go to animation player and let's add a new animation. Okay, we'll so turn down. for what? Let's actually set it in our script. So we can leave it off while we're editing the frames. So we can do. Oh that. yeah. Okay. This is a cool yeah, thing for sure. Function. Definitely need this. So it goes in the ready function. Okay. All right. And accessing the active property and setting it to true. Now let's go back to our animation player and let's animate the sprite. So turn off. down would be starting at zero, frame zero. Let's key that. Create a new track. Go to the next timestamp. And we'll do the first frame. So it's just a quick turn animation when they're turning down. Let's duplicate this. Rename. All right, we don't need this. To six. And this one would be seven. Take me back to the code, bro. So let's go back to the player script. Hell yeah. To incorporate turning in our code, let's use states. So let's first create an enum okay. to define our player states. So enum. And then we'll call this player state. Curly braces, and we can define our states here. <laughs> ah, so fuck. Our first state can be. Yo, dog, I don't know where the curly braces are. Found a, such a moment of defeat. There's like 12 buttons on my keyboard. I don't know the, the exact place of. That's, that's two of them. The idle. Our next state can be turning. And our last one can be walking. And let's also create an enum for facing direction. So which direction our player is facing? Left, right, up, and down. Now let's create corresponding variables to store the state and the facing direction. So player state. And we can default this to be player state dot idle. And also facing direction. And we'll default this to be facing direction dot down. If we scroll down to our physics process function, we can add another if condition. Hold on, buddy. Hold on. I need that last line. It's right there. Facing direction equals facing direction not down. Okay. We can add another if condition if player state is turning. And in this case, let's just skip everything else and just return. So do nothing for now. 
and we'll adjust the second if case to be else if. Now let's go to process player movement input function. No. Back it up. It's the second if case to be else if. Okay. If player state equals player state turning, then return. We're just skipping that for now. And then else if. Right, we need to change this to else if. Because previously it was the if. Okay. Now let's go to process player movement input function. So here we can decide if we need to turn or not. And that would be when we have an input direction. So let's go under here. But before that, let's actually set the anim tree for turn. So we have to add this state to animation tree. Actually, let's just do that right now. So we go to animation tree, right click. So I have uh, connect nodes enabled, so that's why I can't right click. So let's click on the mouse pointer. Now let's right click, add lens space 2D. Okay, we already did this. Let's... Okay, shit, he's back. Okay, all mode. right. Now that animation tree for turn is set, we can now check if we need to turn. So this is a helper function that we need to implement, but if we need to turn, then we can set our player state to be turning. And also we can play our turning animation. Else we can start moving. So we do is moving to true. So now we need to implement the need to turn function. Let's go down here. Funk need to turn. Okay, what was the last thing? If need to turn, player state equals player state turning. Animation state dot travel is turn. Okay. And then. Then there's a quick else. Okay. My God, it's insane how many like nested if and if else statements it takes just to fucking move a Pokemon character. Holy shit, my dude. Okay, and then you're not indented enough? I think, yeah, you're not indented enough. All right, all right. We cool? Okay. This function, we want to determine if the player pressed left and if they are already facing left. And if they are, they should move. If not, they should turn left instead. And likewise for the other directions. So first, we can create a new variable for new facing direction. And let's do an if case. If input direction dot x is less than zero, this means that the new facing direction would be facing left. And let's do this for the rest of the directions as well. Copy and paste, else if, change this sign, and do right. Mm. So for the third case, it'll be dot y, up, and dot y, and this would be down. Okay, now that we got our new facing direction, we have to compare our current facing direction. And if it's not the same, then we turn. So we do facing direction, new direct, new facing direction. So we're updating. And let's just make sure y if y is less than zero, it's up. Okay, okay. yep. The variable. And Backwards. Then we true. Got it. Else, we still update the variable and we return false. All right. Go ahead and get this going. Okay, so after all the different directional things, then we have another part of the if statement. Mm, right, and then of course the other 
the first direction for facing left needs to be if, but everything else is an else if. Okay, and then this part is facing direction is not equal to new facing. Whoop. Didn't mean to capitalize that. Direction. Facing direction. Interesting. If facing direction is not equal to new facing direction. then facing direction equals new facing direction. Okay, so if you're... Oh my god, okay, I think that makes sense. <laughs> so you're like rewriting it. Oh my god, that's weird. Okay, okay. Facing direction equals new facing direction. False. And in that way, we can return whether we need to turn or not. So there's one problem here. We never exit the turning state. We need a signal to tell when the turning state is done. And an easy way to do this is actually signal whenever the animation is done. And we set back the turning state oh, to idle. My god, bro. So I was I need this too. Turn left animation. Cool. And at the end, we want to call a method that sets the state back to idle. So let's create that method in our player script. So func finished turning. And all we have to do here is player state is equal to player state uh, idle. And then here we just do add track, call method track. Okay, hold on. hold on buddy, I'm not in that spot. Damn, okay, this video has taught me like two other things that I actually like need for other reasons. So even if this doesn't work out and I can't translate this into Godot 4, this is still super useful to see these workflows. Okay, so we're going to the animation player. And then he's he's specifically right now looking at turn left. So I, are we gonna have to do this for all of them, dude? Oh my god, I need macros. No, honestly, if there were macros, I would not have the fucking confidence to utilize them at this point in time. Okay, so I need macros and the confidence to use them. There we go. Uh, okay, so we are now we are now here. Back up a tiny state bit. Is equal to player state uh, idle. And then here, we just do add track, call method track. Okay, add track, please, to, great, okay, everything's still the same. And then we want to call a method on the player. Okay, double clicking on player. Ooh, cool, it's a whole separate, uh... Oh, look, it looks the same in his, it's like a whole separate line underneath the other animations. Right click here, click insert key, and let's find finish turning. So right when this animation finishes, it'll call it. Cool. Okay, now hold on. Now let's find finished turning. So that should just be... Ooh, did I actually not finish typing that? I don't have that visible. Actually, okay, let's nope, back it up. Where exactly right is click that? Here. Click insert key. It is in script methods. Interesting. Okay, so hold on. Let me save. Um. Interesting. So I have the function defined, but I have an error message for line 73 expected end of file excuse you the file ends when i say it ends D interesting okay let, uh, let me i gotta hop back and look at his code and make sure my stuff matches this could again come down to a difference in um 
inversions or obviously more likely my inability to fucking follow directions. You hate when software has unrealistic expectations for your files. Yeah, me too. I feel like I feel like it's like judging me. Like, hey, th this thing should end here. Like, should it? Can't a script be as long as I'd like it? You fucking asshole. What's your problem? Or what's my problem, really? Dick script, tell me what my problem is. Okay, so like, he just defines the function. He did exactly what I did. Hmm. Okay, I had an extra indent above me. Oh my god, and that fixed the other the problem I was having? Oh my god, it did. Okay. Whoa. I had one extra indent on the return false. And that was causing the error. Oh my god. I don't understand why that would cause the error. I'm I'm I can have like an idea, but I don't directly understand. Like I get that if I put something in the wrong spot through indenting, then it thinks it is something other than what it is. And so then it just, because it's like a simple process of reading code, it like doesn't understand what's going on. Uh, so probably I was telling it some nonsense. Thank God it can at least just kind of figure out what the problem was. Um, okay, so now hopefully we can go back to where we were and insert key. And I, I think it's still not there. It's called the finish turning function. Yeah, it's still not there. What? Whoops. I thought I was typing in Godot and I just typed and then hit enter. Not in Godot. Dang. Okay. <sighs> it didn't keep our position. That's annoying. All right, it's like right here. So player state. And we can default this to be player state dot idle and also facing direction yeah. and we'll default this to be facing direction dot down if we scroll down to our physics process function we can add another if condition if player state is turning and in this case let's just skip everything else and just return so do nothing for now adjust the second if case to be else if. Now let's go to process player movement input function. So here we can decide if we need to turn or not and that would be when we have an input direction. So let's go under here but before that let's actually set the anim tree for turn. Okay I clicked the save button and now it's here. I had I had some other problem where things weren't working and then I clicked the save button and it worked. Oh, and then I had one, I had something crazy happening where the tile map I was working with was like not doing, it was not drawing what I was trying to get it to draw. Um, and then I just closed Godot and reopened it and then it worked fine. I need to remember that turning it off and turning it back on might actually help me. Maybe not even because Godot's fucked up, but because I did something that gets undone by <laughs> Turning it off and back on. Okay, so the specific thing is finished turning. Yeah. So we did that. Let me get to here. We've already done. To be turning. Yeah. And also, we can play our. Go down. In this function, we want to determine if the Shit. player press left and if they. I jumped too far ahead. Motherfucker. When we have an input direction. So let's go under Where here. Where did I? But before Shit. that, let's actually set the anim tree. Or turn so we have to add this state to animation tree actually let's just do that right now mm, no I didn't jump too far ahead okay we're further in the video than I thought and let's and dot y and this would be down and okay yep we did that and then new yep turn or not we need the signal to do this idle okay 
So let's go to our turn left animation. And at the end, we want to call a method that sets the state back to idle. So let's create that method in our player script. So func finished turning. And all we have to do here is... And then we want to call... Shit, okay. Don't jump too far. And then here, right here. Let's do add track. Call add the track. track. And then we want to call a method on the player. Right click here. Click insert key. And let's find finish turning. Great. So right when this animation finishes, it'll call this function, finish cool. turning. And that sets the player state to be idle. So let's do this for the rest of the turn animations. Okay. So I think actually this is a good place to stop. I'm going to do this. I'm going to set this up for the rest of the animations later today. Um, I'm going to take a quick break and then we're going to play a little bit of Tometsi. We might... I might be at the end of Tometsi. Last time we played Tometsi, it was just like, sorry, dude, this puzzle game is for smart people and you're not smart. And uh, so, you know, we might we might do like one more session. And how, however, it's we're at the point now, it's like we're, we're, our leasing term is over. We're month to month. If Tometsi keeps being good, we're going to keep going. If it, if it ends up being too hard, I don't know. And it's, uh, it's like... Tometsi is already niche content, but then it's not only like bad content for me to be staring at the same puzzle forever stuck, but also it's not fun. And so if I can, I can make a, there's a balance there, right? Like when you're streaming, if something's great content, but you're only like sort of enjoying it, it could still be worth it. You can enjoy it more for the fact that you're like, oh, this is going to be entertaining for people. Uh, but but you know it's it's like we're, we're we're at the bottom of both of those potentially so anyway uh this was this was a potentially productive godot day uh and it's it's nice to be back so i will finish that later and uh then i will i will error check and try to move this code from being functional in godot 3 to godot 4 uh and if not then we're gonna have to start over next week uh, movement wise if, honestly, if I have enough time and I have to start over, I'll figure it out on my own. And then uh, then we're going to work on the camera functions next week. Try to find some good tutorials for that. Anyway, so uh, thanks for hanging out. We'll take a short break. Be right back. And we're going to play some fucking Tometsi. I don't know where all my buttons are. <laughs>